let's just go for it. Right, there is an epic, and I mean an epic lag here uh, for going live onto YouTube. So right now I've been and hit the go live button and fingers crossed that it's coming across to you uh, loud and clear. So I probably said this about 20 seconds ago for you. Uh, so with that said, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move across to the main workbench one, and I can see myself chatting on there, but there's just a massive delay uh, across the YouTube. So slightly different setup uh, than normal. If you can let me know if the audio is good, that will be fantastic. So assuming everything's good, hi, my name's Matt, welcome aboard. Uh, this is a live session which we're going to run every Saturday morning for the foreseeable future, where we get to have a chit chat, uh, and mull over a couple of topics for RC, get some models built, get some models repaired. Uh, also, there's a topic which we're going to touch today, which is a CNC router, which is that I've got big chunks of her ready uh, and to go. So we're going to be discussing about that in a few moments time. Now, do remember, you can get involved with today's live chat uh, with the live session on the right hand side of your screen. There's a live chat. Now, obviously, if you're using the iPad or mobile phone, you'll probably have to press the live chat button to get involved. Uh, if you've got questions or comments as we go along, uh, just feel free to get involved. And thank you, Stefan uh, for, and uh, Wally Mick uh, for letting me know the audio is good as well. Right, with that said, I've got a collection of topics uh, and let's quickly just run out. I'll tell you what, let's get straight up. Last week, we had a really good chat but we didn't get much built, did we? So let's get to that workshop uh, and uh, we'll <laughs> and actually get stuff done. Now, to give you a heads up, we have a Sir Newton on my desk uh, and that's what we're gonna be looking at in a moment. Uh, you can also see that I'm fully laden up with coffee as well, so uh, give you a heads up. I am aiming for an hour, uh, but I may get one or two interruptions coming as things progress, so I wanna apologize in advance. I've got a car being picked up uh, and a car being taken away today as well. So uh, it is really busy here in the Ogborn household today. Right, so with that said, uh, you'll notice I've got a camera above the worktop. Now, a couple of topics for us to be discussing today. This is what we're gonna be chatting about here at the workbench this morning. Uh, the Sir Newton, which is what we've got here. That's the first thing which I need to get done today because tomorrow is a flying day. Can't wait. A Little bit windy, who cares if the sun's out? Gonna burn me head. Uh, we also are going to be chatting about the CNC build. There's a big chunk of the CNC over there. We'll be chatting about the progress for uh, how far we've got. Oh, I've got a massive bag of end mills. We'll take a quick look at those too. Uh, we've got a camera lens, which we need to uh, chat about. Uh, we also need somebody to own up for crashing Banggood overnight as well. Uh, anybody want to own up to that one? Feel free to admit it now. We are going to have a quick chat about the Ranger 1600. That's been built, it's ready to go. Uh, quick little hint for you, those of you in the Rack the Nuts of Facebook group, the post build thoughts are now in that group uh, and that will be published uh, maybe tomorrow evening. Not entirely sure on my schedule just yet. I've got a load of videos which are backlogged uh, and I'm not too sure which that one's gonna be out on Sunday or not. We'll see on that one. Uh, and, oh, a little shameless plug. I have some Rag the Nuts of stickers and some t-shirts on the way to me, so look out for those in the Facebook group in the next week as well. Let me go and get this screen back over here. Now you will notice uh, that I've got a slight office change. I'm not running across there to do it. I've set the laptop over this side uh, for today's session so I can keep an eye on your chat as well. Uh, hello Dave, how you doing sir? Uh, RCA, uh, Little Duck, yes, uh, and good morning uh, Jazzy as well. Uh, and Diamonds and Rust, good morning too. Uh, so, let's start with number one. Oh, actually, let's go, let's go straight off topic straight away. Uh, you know that Ranger? I actually found the instructions. <laughs> it's a bit late now, I've kind of already been and built them. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, the Sir Newton. Now, what is the Sir Newton and what is the model which we're looking at? Uh, in short, it's the Lidl chuck gliders. I'm sure you've seen them. They're what, they five quid in Lidl uh, every a year or a half year uh, or every six months or so. They come out with these chuck gliders, which you can pick up for peanuts in Lidl. Uh, and there is a massive following in, into converting these. 
And the thing is, is that I've seen all the different conversions, but none of them have really tickled it for me. Uh, however, I want to say a massive thumbs up to Rick in the uh, Facebook group because he made a Sir Newton, which is a canard plane. So uh, most of you would know a chuck glider if I put that round like that. Uh, that way round, that will look familiar to you with the tail fin at the back and the motor on the front. However, a canard plane, uh, or Sir Newton as I'm calling it, has a flat surface on the front uh, and uh, we've got the motor on the back and then we've got the wings at the back. Now to add to the peculiarity of this model, which is something which I need to try and set up here this morning. I hope I've, oh, I don't say I've lost one. Yeah, that'd be, oh no, found it, yay. Uh, is to add to the curiosity for this model is that you'll notice that we don't actually have any uh, movable surfaces on the front. However, the whole wing set, and we don't, sorry, and we also don't have any normal surfaces on the back either, do we? There's no surfaces, oh, well. <laughs> put that on the wrong way around, didn't I? <laughs> and there's nothing quite like doing this live. There's also nothing quite like editing all the mistakes out as well. So you can obviously tell this is being live. Uh, and if I get this round the right way round, is, if I just push that round there. So there's our chuck glider. So it flies, I tell you what, when I move across to the main screen, because it'll make more sense. Give me a moment. So we'll go workbench, right. So this will make more sense to you now. So there's, this is now the front of the model with a motor on the back. And to, for the model to, to pitch uh, and turn is that we've got to move these surfaces at the back, which then, so if those, let me get this right. So if we push both of them down, the model will go up because it will tip the nose up in the sky. And if we push them back, which we don't have that much, it'll push it down. So we are a little bit limited on what we can do there because it's hitting the servos. Um, yeah, it might have failed in the design stage on that one, but let's ignore that for now. We just need to make it fly. Uh, and then of course we can move the whole surfaces as well. They're pivoting around the center axis uh, of the wing as well. So yeah, little bit of fun, never flown anything like that. I've, <laughs> I've just seen how bent those are, how <laughs> so those are a um, proper little hat job, which I've managed to do on this one. Uh, and that, that's what I'm calling a Sir Newton. So I've got a couple of things to do here this morning. Uh, the two major ones is that I need to get the motor working uh, and I need to get, I just need to get it flight worthy for tomorrow, which involves two things. A, a getting the motor wired up uh, or soldered up on the back. And of course we have a, we have a 50-50 chance of getting it the right way around, which we all know is a 100% chance of getting it wrong. Uh, and I need to just get the lid soldered on, uh, what do we call it, uh, hot glued on as well. Uh, I did notice we got a slight thrust angle issue, but I just need to make it flight worthy for tomorrow. That's my plan. So uh, yeah, let's take, we'll get that one across the desk and we'll get this one set up right now. Uh, and on that note, an open question to you is that, have you been and bought one of these little gliders? And if so, did you convert, have you converted it yet? And if so, what did you convert it to? Did you made a slope saw out of it? Have you made it a powered model? Had you even considered making a Sir Newton? Let me know, live chat on the left-hand side of the screen. So let's get back to the workbench top uh, on there and get back to our chat as well. Let's have a quick look. Uh, I see hobbies, it says, can't wait for the maiden. I can't wait either. It's gonna be quite an oddity to say the least. Now, before I go any further, what do I need to do? I need to make sure I don't lose those bits. And uh, we'll need the soldering iron on as well so that we can get the motor sorted because then I'll then do the surfaces last. And we'll go from there. Right, so let's get these wing pieces out of the way. Let's get the soldering iron on. Now that is gonna be a little bit loud because it's right next, when I plug this in, because it's right next to the microphone. There we go, soldering iron on. Uh, just on the topic of soldering irons, is that I saw somebody in the Facebook group saying about buying, what was it, the TS200 or whatever, that really expensive soldering iron. Let me just make my point, or stress my point of view when it comes to soldering irons, is I don't see absolutely any point in spending more than 10 quid on a soldering iron. Uh, so what we've got here, and what we're gonna be using today, is the cheapest soldering iron, which you can buy in Screwfix for about nine pounds. 
Uh, but the one thing which you will categorically need to do is change the tip uh, on the soldering iron, and it looks a bit manky at the moment, but it'll clean up really well in just a mo. Uh, is that just buy the cheapest set of silver line uh, soldering iron tips from Amazon for about four pounds. So all in all, we'll say less than fifteen pounds. You can have a soldering iron which will cover ninety nine percent of the requirement for the average RC hobbyist. Uh, so that's my view on soldering irons. Obviously. If you feel that you want a TS, whatever it is, um, well, knock yourself out. But for me, and all the soldering which I do, which can be quite a lot, I'm not gonna argue with 15 quid. Just putting that out there. Do you own one of those? Would you even consider spending just a tenner or less on a soldering iron uh, as well? Good morning, by the way, Kevin, too. Right, that's getting warm. Uh, we'll need to get that cleaned up. There's also something which I need to do. I need to set this model up in the Tyrannus 2. Quick update on the Crossfire module. So many of you will know that I went for the Crossfire module in the back of my Tyrannus uh, and moved across to that system. Uh, hindsight's beautiful because we had, what was it, the R9 for FR Sky just came out and just floored the market for long range stuff uh, or the 8. 6, 8 megahertz or 9, 15 megahertz stuff if you're not in the UK. Uh, and they absolutely floored the market uh, and made their kits because they somebody got a bit gobby and then FR Sky just basically said, up yours. Uh, and then they'd sold loads of, I, 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 I can only imagine thousands of units of the R9 system. Now, that's obviously, I didn't know that was going to happen. You don't know that was going to happen. Uh, but ultimately, I paid, oh, about 200 quid uh, all in plus receivers and other bits and bobs as well uh, for my for the TVS Crossfire I don't have a single complaint about it at all the one time when I had a fail safe with the Crossfire uh, was my own fault in those circumstances because I was running on only just 10 milliwatts of course uh, and that was actually the reason because I was only running on 10 milliwatts I flew around the back of some trees which I knew that I've drip flown through before and I fell safe. <laughs> so that video when we were going off to, to go and get it, uh, that was entirely my fault because the power settings were wrong on the device. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, oh, how do you Charlie as well? Uh, Rick, how do you Rick? Oh, just looking at the live chat going on. By the way, if you're watching the recorded version, the live chat you'll be able to see on the left hand side of your screen if you hit the live chat button. Uh, so Rick's been and been through four of the little gliders. The first was a slope, second was a twin boom pusher uh, with FBV, a third was a little flying wing. Uh, and oh, Rick, so it was you, it was your fault for making the canard. I really liked it. I genuinely, every now and again, there's a model which turns up in the Facebook group. And I go, That's brilliant. I'm really not a big fan of self builds at all because they normally just take forever and stuff like that. Um, so this one was surprisingly quick, to say the least. Really um, impressed with it. Let's have a quick look. My little glider flew great, 1806, 2700 kV motor and getting 10 minutes of spirited flying out of an 850 mAh 3S. So yeah, I've kind of worked within with what I've got for mine. Uh, I have uh, a definitely a misaligned motor on the back. Uh, I have a 2400 kV 2206 motor on the back, so some might say a little bit too throaty for this model, but it's going to be windy at the Flat Funny Farm tomorrow, so it might need that extra bit of grunt in there. 6x4 prop, uh, and to be run on either a 2S or a 3S, I haven't sorted out which one I'm going to do. I've got two batteries of a very similar size, so that's a 2S. Uh, I if I've got a 3S, uh, I, oh, sorry, I'll take three S's with me, which have got an XT30 connector on there. Uh, so at least I've got options. Uh, one thing which I'm not going to make the mistake on to begin with is that uh, what I am going to do is just t uh, tape on with masking tape uh, the battery onto the fuselage uh, to just work out where the CG is for this model. Uh, in fact, I may take it out to the back garden and give it a few throws first just to work out where it is. Uh, because that should be a lot safer for it, bless it. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So that's my plan with that one. Uh, anyway, need to progress on. I was trying to get to the point of setting up the transmitter. This is exactly what happened last week. It went completely off topic uh, as well. 
Uh, yes, Charlie, just a few moments ago. Welcome aboard, fella. And, uh, right. Welcome to Tyrannus. Switch warning. Stabilization off. Horizon mode. Engine right. off. High rates. Switch warning. Engine off. High rates. I'm not apologising. Some of you may think that, wow, Matt, your Tyrannus is quite chatty. Uh, the reality is, is that when you're on the flight line or you've got the goggles down, is having your model rates. tell you rates. Rates. which one you're in is absolutely invaluable because if you knock a switch without a voice message on there, you don't know that suddenly you because you go in to do pull into a tight turn, for example, and really you're on the low rates instead of high rates. There's quite a lot of difference uh, when you're flying around. Uh, put it that as I'm sure you can, uh, I'm sure you're aware of. Right. So I need to find a flying wing in here, uh, which I'm sure I've got one. Oh, there's a bonsai there. So I'm going to copy that model. Uh, let's go up and stick it over there somewhere. So bonsai, uh, select model. Switch warning. Engine off. High rates. Low rates. Right. First thing which I'm going to do is A, name this model. So we're going to name this. Uh, I'm going to go RS. Just want to make sure it stands out to me when it's in there. I'll go on and finish this off later. Uh, go through Sir. And then change that to Newton. There's um, actually going off s slightly off topic is that uh, I'm actually going to make a, a, an idiot's guide to the Tyrannus because there's been a few comments in the Facebook group. Uh, about people finding the Tyrannus quite complicated and having to press all these buttons and it having all these features and functions when in reality it's not that scary at all and 99% of the time we don't touch the stuff all those extra features you just get the basics right in, in fact you set up one normal model and you set up one flying wing and that's all you need in your arsenal in your in your transmitter because everything else you can just copy there's no need for the desktop software at all uh, and it might come as a bit of a shock horror to you is that i don't know i can't well i can't don't even know what version of uh, software which is running on here because in short it just works i have no inclination to update it because it just works you know there's a there's a lot there's the, don't get me wrong the tyrannus can do an awful lot of different things and it's highly configurable but that also makes it highly scary for the average RC pilot so that's something which I will be addressing uh, in the very near future with uh, uh, a couple of videos over with the Tyrannus so uh, with that said uh, go across flight modes that's all been set up we got throttle that's all set up now I do need to get rid of uh, any trims in here reset all right, that's all I need to do, and get, get the tr one thing which I always forget to do is to take the trims out of a model which I've just been and copied. Uh, so I've been and done that on mine, and I've also been into I don't know if you know about this a massive tip for you which you've got a Tyrannus uh, is that if you go across to the outputs tab, is that maybe you've got your model trimmed in, okay, or you perhaps. Worst case, you need some extra trim. What you can do is go to the bottom and there's an option called trim and sub trims. If you press enter and hold on that one, whatever trims you've got gets stored into sub trims, which is basically take whatever my trims were and store it. And then what then happens is back on the main screen, all your trim options reset and go into the center so you can have trim on top of trim. Now there is a massive negative to doing that, which is that you've then got trim on top of trim, which is not ideal because you've got server, server has only got a certain amount of movement. Um, but anyway, we digress. We have a model, uh, the motor's turned off. I'll sort the binding out in a moment. What I'm gonna do, I've got a fib, like I said, I've gotta get this soldered up. And as we know, we have a 50-50 chance. And by the way, I'm just gonna be using insulation tape. I'm, it, it's crude yet effective. You know, it's in a chuck glider model, which is going to be flown line of sight. And those of you which know which knows my, know my flying is that, uh, God forbid, we ever have an issue with a model in the sky. I am the first person to point it at the ground and just don't care. I just, as far as models are concerned, they're, they're just foam, you know. Uh, so I am just going to be using a bit of an insulation tape because I think that's perfectly good enough. Right. There's quite a bit of chat going on there at the moment. Uh, CG too far back is totally unflyable, flat spin. 
so start a bit nose heavy, absolutely wreck. I take that advice on board. Uh, need to get my little finished. I've two, I've gone for the goblin style. Oh, I really like those really short little bodies. I bet that's gonna fly amazing. Uh, whoa, holy. One person, which was here at the very, very beginning of the Rag the Nuts off, has just turned up in there. I will message you directly on Facebook afterwards. Glad to see you around. I was getting a bit worried, if I'm frankly honest. I will message you on Facebook after the live episode. Um, so very, very nice to see that you're around. You're alive, etc., etc. So I'll message you afterwards as well. Uh, Julian as well, good morning sir. Uh, we will be having a chit chat about the Ranger 1600 in a few moments and no I haven't been and flown it yet. I've literally just gone out and just made sure everything is out and uh, ready uh, for it to be done. So anyway, need to plough on, need to get stuff done. You think this is going to be the first time we actually build something on a build Saturday so it took two live sessions uh, for us to get in there. A uh, little tip, those of you who do soldering, there's two things which you, don't. sorry top camera, Buy one of those, super cheap, massive tip. Get some lead strips uh, and put some lead in the bottom because otherwise there's not enough gravity and you're poking it and it goes off the desk. If you put a load of lead in the bottom, happy days. And another massive tip is to get yourself a flux pen. These are $2.99 uh, on eBay and they help, they, they just help the solder flow uh, in short, which is absolutely invaluable uh, when it comes to uh, maybe solder which is the non-lead type for example uh, and let's just go through here I'm just gonna pre tin everything as well uh, absolutely stinks but the um, flux pen just stops the uh, uh, oxidization of the solder so let's quickly get that on there we'll pop that on there as well I'm just trying to remember, I've got loads of stuff to get done ready for tomorrow. Uh, we've got this one which I need to get ready. I've got all my batteries to get done ready for tomorrow as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, just a whole raft of stuff because I've not been flying in a good couple of days. Is that, that's not gonna work, is it? Just seeing we don't have enough um, wire exposed. And uh, I am still very much in a in a transit at the moment, we've got the new workbench here, but I don't have the new worktop on here, and I don't. I have all my tools as separate, and I haven't really made this my home yet for the main workbench. Although, as you can tell by the state of it, uh, I have been using it an awful lot, uh, to say the least. Oh, yeah, Julian, you're a fan of the uh, Batwing. That little. Activity alarm. Shut up, woman. Uh, that Batwing, we seriously abused that model, didn't we? I even gave it to Andy and said, go on, I dare you to try and write it off. Uh, and he hit a bush with it. I'd already smashed it in the ground and we'd hot glued it twice already. And then Andy stuck it in a hedge at full knacker. Uh, and a tiny bit of hot glue layer, it just wouldn't die. It genuinely would not die. I've not come across a model like that. Um, in fact, that probably gives us some hope because I genuinely hope that they bring out an updated version of the Wing Wing Z84, but make it out of EPP foam. If they made that out of EPP foam, there would just be no killing it, would there? It would be like a model for life. Uh, you just wouldn't top it off because it just won't die. <laughs> so some of you may be wondering, Matt, why are you soldering straight to these little connectors, not put little connectors on there? Uh, the short answer is that in this scenario, uh, I, it's not really needed because it's going to be up underneath a, uh, a lid anyway, uh, and it will be frankly good enough. It just needs to be on there uh, and to have a good connection, which it currently does not. There we go. Yeah, like I said, this one just needs to be good enough uh, so that we see it. And again, if it is good enough and it works out to be a corker, then uh, I may come back and revisit this. I may spend more time on getting that motor mount straight because it's currently definitely not straight. Uh, and come on, there we go. That was really nice, thank you. Something quite getting flicked in the face with solder, is there? Right, remove myself out round to one side because I don't want that to happen again. Yeah, that's happening too many times. Two times too many. Right. Let's 
then that in. The second I was putting heat on it, that was it. It was wanting to move, uh, which is no fun. Cool, come on. I need some of those little arms. You know, the ones the ones which hold out. And I, I did have a set of those before, but they just didn't last. Uh, the, cro the crocodile, not the crocodile clips themselves. It was the backs of the clips uh, where it joined their little helping hands thing. Uh, is the, yeah, that was just an... They just gave out over time, uh, and uh, yeah, as such, they were just really frustrating. Right, this one's suffering from the same issue as well. Right, no idea if this is the right way round for the uh, thing or not, the connections or not, but we'll find out in a moment. Now, I'm sure someone's going to shout at me, you should take that propeller off. Um, don't you worry, I'm fully aware there's a propeller on the back. Uh, and uh, I will be keeping my hands away from it, to say the least, as you will find out in just a few moments' time. What was that going to fit in there? Just need a tiny bit poking out. That's it. That's it. There we go. I'm sure that's coming out lovely. On oh, no. there. That's not... Ah! It's where you need an extra hand, isn't it? Come on. There we go, that's good enough. Right, pause in a moment just to get across to your chat. Uh, yeah, absolutely, so when it comes to the CG on this one, I'm, it's categorically gonna be nose heavy. I will start with the battery probably up here somewhere, right up in the nose. Uh, that's what I'm aiming for, right up in the nose out of the way. And we'll see what happens there again because I've pro I've probably put too big of a motor on the back if I'm honest. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's gonna get. I'll put that up the front somewhere so it'll be no. It should be at least should be nose heavy. Uh, I'll give it give it a few throws in the garden anyway. Uh, and the reason and there's two reasons for that. A is for the CG and B just to make sure if I have the surfaces going the right way because. One thing which I do know about these mods where you put the, uh, where you move the whole surface is that the rolls on them uh, is absolutely bonkers to say the least. Absolutely bonkers, but point very, very well taken. So with that said, let's get her turned on. And it'll be a moment of truth for a couple of things. Right, uh, throttle down and that back switch on my Tyrannus. Engines armed, engine off is my safety switch that overrides channel one for me, which is my throttle uh, down to minus 100. So then I know it's uh, safe uh, in short. So yes, well, I might be uh, working with the propeller on, uh, which you probably don't want to do, but I will be keeping my hands well away from there. And also it's just hanging there. Worst case, I can grab it and pull it away. Right. Servos are working, which is a bonus. Engines are Happy days! How often does that happen? How many times have you wired up an ESC to a motor and it's worked right first time? I can probably count on one hand when that's happened. In fact, there was a model here which had two uh, motors on it. I wired it up and they both went the right way first time. It's one of those things which just get logged into your memory. Uh, into, yeah, literally into your memory because it doesn't happen every single day. Normally what happens uh, is that they always go the wrong blooming way. And of course, if they were going the wrong way, uh, we've got basically three options. Some ESCs let you reverse the uh, spin of the motor. You can change the direction. Uh, some motors, uh, so you could switch the wires over, so desolder and then resolder, or you could swap the propeller over. The last one you never want to do uh, because uh, with RC model or model airplanes is that you do expect for the propeller to be counterclockwise, uh, to spin, yes, counterclockwise, uh, because that's how every other single model is set up. So most motor mounts have some angle in them. Uh, so to change the thrust of it, to compensate for the torque uh, of the motor. Uh, and uh, yeah, so you don't, yeah, you normally want to use counterclockwise motor, uh, propellers 
for RC models. Obviously with multi-rotors, uh, then you need to mix them up because it helps with stability. But uh, yeah, single propeller models, yes, absolutely. Right, that is good enough in short. So let's get this solder and iron up out of the way. And I feel like we're actually doing a build Saturday. Isn't this cool? <laughs> My reference is the last week when we just chatted absolutely loads. So uh, uh, let's go and get that one out. Oh, I would love to get ready for that for tomorrow. Oh, is that gonna happen? Oh, I don't know. I keep meaning, there's a video which I really, really wanna do, which is, on the EF Extra, I absolutely love my EF Extra. I've got a V900, which was the Horizon Hobby E-Flight one. I paid £175 for that, and it's not that good. Whereas the EF Extra, what did we pay? 125 quid for it, even when it was brand new. And it flies really well, and they've got a load of spares well. And I've, I've planted that thing in the grounds several times and it keeps on going big fan of the ef extra and it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting um episode when we look at the v900 because yes it is fast but it's not as good as the ef extra and i think the v900 given its due is faster but i think better value for money all round is the EF Extra. Does, does that make sense? I just think it flies better. I just, there's parts available. It's a proven airframe, airframe and it just, oh, and it comes with an FBV pod. So that's something else which I need to sort out here today. So, ugh. Right, uh, pause in for a moment for your chat as well. Uh, no, definitely not sloping that one as well. Yes, absolutely. And Space Toy, Lord, I'm working on my latest little mod too. Uh, yeah. Happy days. Chris, welcome aboard. Chris, we will chat about the CNC in a moment. I have made some really good progress. Anyway, I needed to at least finish-ish the job at hand. Uh, and that's to get these wings on here and hot glue that lid on. So where I, whatever I've done with the hot glue gun, I did half prepare myself here. Ah, there it is. Half prepare myself this morning. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit of shame. I don't have my pink hot glue gun. The girls nicked it back off me. I really like the little pink one. It was really cool. So I got this really crappy brown one. So which just leaks everywhere. Uh, so yeah, not that much of a fan. I also had some hot glue gun sticks here somewhere. I did have some form of preparation here this morning. Believe it or not. While that hot glue gun's warming up, I do need to get into my boxes and go and find ourselves uh, some... What are they called? They're not... They're clevises? When I find... I find them... In, oh, there you go. Found them straight away. <laughs> that was not planned at all, I can assure you. Uh, let's move that out of the way. What are those called? What are these? It doesn't even say. It just says they're 2.1 millimetres. They are the little brass or Chinese metal adapters which you can put on the end of a servo. So can I put this up on the camera? Does, is that showing alright for you? Just up there? You know what I mean. Those little doodads. Uh, and it just makes the uh, the setup uh, and adjustability of um, the control horn just so, so much easier uh, on the model. So let's get this. that's the opposite wing. And let's get this wing. So I'm going to do the left wing first. So the first thing which I need to do uh, is get a hole drilled in there. Uh, I also need Loctite as well. Thread locker. Blue stuff. Oh, goodness me. Never, ever buy the red stuff because the red stuff's permanent. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Uh, the red. The, it always says buy the blue stuff. If you want to get it back off again, put the blue stuff in. If you want it to stay on there for its eternity and have to use an impact driver to get it off, use the red stuff. Absolute nightmare. Uh, anyway, need to drill this out to get that in there. So what else do I need? I need drills uh, too, which I know that I'm lacking on. Please, uh, I have, I paid about 20 quid for this really nice Araba set of uh, drills. They are here in the office somewhere. I used them once and I've put them down and I haven't seen them since. 
I am here just quickly scanning around to see if I can spot them. Really nice posh box, the lot, like the, the drills which you keep for the best days, you know. Uh, no, you couldn't find it. I had no idea where they are at all. So uh, let's quickly line those up. That's definitely too big. I quite like the look of that. Let's go and find ourselves a drill. Oh, I learned something new this week. A washer is called, get this, a precision shim. I didn't know that. I'm going to have to... <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> it made me laugh when I read that in that manual. It was uh, quite peculiar. Now, quick note there. Those of you which are uh, joining us here live, this is a live RC build se uh, session. Right now, we are working on a Sir Newton, which is a canard plane. Uh, we've got the ESC in, we've got the motor wired up. Just working on getting the servos in so they get lots of movement in the rear surfaces. We will see how that works in real life in just a few moments once we've been and got that one done. Of course, if you have just been enjoying this live, there is a live chat on the right hand side of your screen uh, so that you can get involved and let me know and what everybody else know uh, what's going on and what you are working on this morning. Heck, if you're just laid in bed and you're about to go off to ZZ land, have a great evening. Uh, if you're already woken up and you're uh, a good jug of coffee in already, Happy days. Let's go and get some stuff built in short. Uh, so, and that's the purpose of these uh, build Saturdays. Is a couple of people which have got perhaps a slight issue with RC to join up, have a chit chat, and just carry on in short as normal. Right. Uh, do I need? <laughs> which, if I put that on. Oh, wow. So I've got to do this backwards. That's going to be fun. Right. I don't know if anybody has worked out my screw up yet. Right, I've just heard something going on outside, so I know what that is. Um, you may not have worked out what my screw up is just yet with that. I'm just going to look for a pair of pliers a moment. is that I have put the servo, and they're hot glued in, they're not coming back out again. The servos are in the wrong place. So I'm now having to work with my inbuilt indiscretion uh, to, that's not working out very well at all. Is it gonna be good enough? I'm just gonna force those in with a pair of pliers, which is, is that gonna, yep, that's moving freely. A uh, little dab of blue, not tight on the back. Stick that on there. Always fed me the little things. That said, if you've never come across those adapters before, they are absolutely fantastic. You literally just put an Allen key, or maybe it depends on the type of screw on the end, uh, and it does allow you to. Uh, reconfigure or adjust your push rods uh, in your model absolutely invaluable in the right circumstances such as this one uh, because it just makes the setup a million times easier uh, those of you which are curious about the wing i didn't do this mod to this wing it was andrew horseman uh, who did it for me last year i found this model in the cellar took one look at it a couple of days back and thought wow i'm making a sir newton uh, what he's been and done is that down there through the middle is that we've got a carbon outer tube, uh, another inner tube, and there's a tiny little bit which has been inset in there, which is for our control surface for our push rod to go in. And then up underneath, they've done su it's fa such a fantastic job, cut out a hole in the bottom for where the tube goes through, and then put a little plastic washer in there and one of those little um, Z clips as well. Really, really nice job. So uh, yeah, praises there for Andy. Thank you, so I do appreciate Oh, it might have been his brother John, to be honest. Uh, I can't remember which one of them did it. And again, there's washers in there in the side of the wing section, so there's plenty of free movement. And let's get this up and around. So I need that to go on there, like so. And I do need to find my screws, which Oh, that glue gun is spilling its guts out absolutely everywhere. Always good fun. Yeah. 
Let's get that in there. And what have I forgotten? What do I have? I don't have Allen keys. That's what I needed. And again, I can't wait to get this desk sorted out because uh, I'm over on that side. I'm going to have like this hidden drawer which I can put stuff in. Probably tools like this, for example. Uh, and also, and I've, if I put that, will that one fit? Uh, on the opposite, oh, chances of that, yes, it does fit. So that's done up and nice and tight now. Uh, is that on the opposite side, I'm not just saying I'm gonna have somewhere which I can just push all the rubbish off the desk into a bin, lift up the hatch, just pour the crap into the bin. Uh, I think that's gonna be super, super handy. Uh, but I also need some tools up on that wall as well, all the common stuff. Uh, and some other bits and bobs up here in the window too, so that when we're working here at the desk trying to get through stuff, is that I do have everything available to me. So I'm not having to do what I'm having to do right now, which is nip over there to go and get some, and then coming back and then end up the tools here on the desk and here and everything. Oh. Yeah, working through it at the moment. Life's tough, isn't it? <laughs> right. Uh, which hole did we go on there? So just go and do the same on that one. Just going to drill that one out as well. Right, pausing for a moment. Uh, morning, Dave, by the way. Just saw Dave turn up in the chat as well. If you don't know Dave Knox, we'll call him Mr. Consistent every single day uh, since I, what, for the last, uh, how many years now, Dave? He said, popped into the Facebook group and said, good morning. So good morning, Dave. <laughs> uh, shameless plug for the Rag the Nuts Off Facebook group. Uh, literally nip across to uh, Facebook, type in Rag the Nuts Off. Uh, or go to Facebook forward slash groups forward slash rag the nuts off. Uh, there's about 3,000 of us RC pilots like me and you, which are in there, um, genuinely abusing foam is the uh, upshot to it. Although, I was thinking about this the other day. I haven't abused that much foam that badly in quite a while. Is that something which I should change? Don't know, I don't know. So uh, yeah, we'll look out, to, look out for that. There's a few um, changes which are in progress is all I'm gonna say, and that is one of them. Let's get those in there. Right, uh, what have I missed on there? <laughs> Vince says, just like a hammer, it's called a fine adjustment tool. Yes, the persuasion device, <laughs> the persuader, is what the hammers get called here. Uh, good morning, Arios, I think that's right on there. Uh, currently building a dead cat style seven inch long range quad. Happy days. Uh, also, and alongside that, I'm working for a firefly wing. Oh, I've got a firefly here, wing here, in that box over there. And to be honest, that's one of the reasons for a build Saturday is that I can put aside at least an hour every Saturday morning, like you could do, is that an hour Saturday morning, and just chip away at a couple of models. Uh, and sing, sit, chill, drink some coffee. Mm. Stone cold, my favorite. And just get some models done. That Firefly, I've had here for two months, probably a little bit long, uh, uh, put it this way, embarrassingly too long. And maybe that's the next one which I need to get up here on the workbench. But that's one of my biggest issues is A, time, and B, just try and prioritize getting some of these models fixed. Because we'll go out, we'll fly and we'll, get, we'll abuse them. There's like my spec wing over there, which I wrapped around a tree so hard. And I genuinely mean so hard. I've stripped the gears and the metal gears in both servos in the wings. That's how hard I hit the tree. The, the, the wing itself is fine, but the servos shot. And it was one of the best wings which I've got for flyability. And could remember it only cost me 30 quid as well. So... Yeah, that's the underlying, well, one of the underlying reasons to, for these build Saturdays is to just get some of these fixed because it is a really good model. It just needs me to get my icing gear to get it going, you know? Right. We will build a so Newton here this morning. And by the way, what, what, what am I talking about, Sir Newton? That is any model which has got canards on the front. That's the logic which I'm going with this one. Uh, so let's get this up and around in there. That hot glue gun is still smelling its guts everywhere. Right, it would be easier if I put that up like so. And put that in there. Come on. Come on, goody. Here we go. Yeah. 
Some might say I could have even planned that quite badly because I've done it the wrong way around. But uh, let's not go there on that one. Right, let's get this push rod up through there. I also need to rotate that as well. Ooh, that is going to be a bit tight, isn't it? Let's bang that one up through there. Right, there we go. And then I have got, oh, that's going to be really good fun. I also need to find, I've got a really expensive, well, for me, really expensive. I bought this fantastic, it was this really cool little uh, ply, set of pliers. I think they cost me about 14 quid off Amazon. Really, really good quality. And they are so nice to use. It is unreal. I had them here at my desk a week ago-ish. Not seen them since. They've, they've fallen somewhere. That's why I need a tool rack up there. So everything has a home. One thing which I have learnt. Um, so yeah, we will get to the build in a moment. This is this is it's a chat. All right, is that I went off on a slight bender with some MXYs. Big fuck off mistake. But let's not even go there on that one. But one thing which I did. There was two things which I learned from three things which I learned from that experience. A, I really don't like car buyers. Uh, B is that I made a really, really good friend who was actually my half cousin. We, 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 we get on like a house on fire. He's a genuinely really nice guy. But the one thing which I picked up from him is because it is his own business. And if he doesn't do it, nobody else is, is, is going to do that. And he just gets in there uh, and you, you've got parts coming out left, right and centre. But they are coming out in an organised fashion. And the thing is, is when it comes to his tool chest, every single component has a home. And the reason why every single component has a home, so uh, socket sets all specifically lined out, uh, uh, wrenches, etc., on the top, uh, then you have certain parts in this one, then you have pliers, you have a different collection of pliers, uh, then you have a whole mass of great big draw just the hammers, which you've got in there, breaker bars sat down in the bottom, pry bars in there, everything has a place, and you can tell I'm working off memory from where all the places were, because that's how much stuff I did with cars very recently. Uh, and the, the, the thing is, is that because that is time, okay, it becomes just, uh, he, he wants a pair of night wine, if a second draw down, open up, take those out, close the drawer and then you can get, because that's how a mechanic makes his money, is not it, in, in, just in doing the job and forming the relationship with the customer, it's doing it faster than what the book time says. So for example, a clutch change on an MX-5 is got a book time of four hours, but for every minute which he does it faster than four hours, and makes in time because he, he can only charge four hours labor uh, on that because that's what the book time is. So if he can do it in three hours or less with an extra pair of hands, that's where he makes his money because he basically doubles his money by getting twice as much done in half the time or it, getting stuff done in half the time. So there was good luck, an awful lot which I've learned over the last couple of weeks, uh, a couple of months from, uh, from a slight misadventure, I think we'll say. So, uh, yeah, came back um, highly motivated to get a certain couple of things done in the right fashion. Anyway, there's me chatting away. I'm look at your chat as well. Uh, good morning, Jack, as well. Uh, good morning, David. Uh, Red Dragon, hi from Amsterdam. Hello, sir. Oh, if you're in Amsterdam, you've got the... Uh, something, no, the, the Hobby King event coming up very shortly. Is that in June, July? I don't even know what month we're in. Uh, you've got that coming up really shortly. And that's only just down the road from Amsterdam. I did look that up uh, across as well. Uh, <laughs> so I lose coffees in my garage. Yeah, it's quite often for me to find a cup of coffee in here. Uh, and it's got mould in it because I've stuck it in the window. So I'll put it down here, put it down there. Uh, yeah, untold for it. Uh, so a quick look. Uh, Chris says, true. I feel a bit sad about thinking how much of my life I've wasted. Uh, looking at that thing I put somewhere. Yes, unfortunately. I'm sure somebody has measured that the the amount of hours spent over a lifetime looking for the car keys, which you swear blind you put down there. But of course, the wife knows exactly where it is because the women out there, you know it. You've gone out there. When you're in primary school, it, I, I think it might be primary school. No, no, it's, yeah, it's late primary school, the last year of primary school. You get, to, you get taught, well, they get taught two things. The first one is 
that look, right? So every man out there knows the look. There must be a special class. They get pulled to one side and get taught the look. There must be like training classes for it because my daughter, who's 11, has perfected it. Absolutely just, I can't even do it. They, 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 they've taken special training. It must be a class which isn't on the curriculum must be a girl thing which us men we don't know about. And the other thing which they get as well, and that doesn't, and this one doesn't happen until uh, late teens, is that they get the memory upgrade. They know what you've done with your shit. I, it's, it, yeah, women, they're very peculiar things. There's that secret class in primary school, last year of primary school, where they get taught the look. You know what we were talking about here. Uh, and um, yeah, they get the memory upgrade because they always remember what you did for stuff, even if you weren't even there. Drives me nuts. Anyway, RC, just move on. Progress. Pla oh. <laughs> I am in. Right, so I've looked this up in a minute. What if, screw it, if you're on the live version, uh, look this up once the live session's over. There's a YouTube channel which. If I was to say that I've binge watched every single episode at least once, I'd probably be half telling the truth to you. There's a YouTube channel called the Mill uh, Millennial Farmer. Look them up, MF, Millennial Farmer. Uh, if it's a bloke in a tractor, you found the right channel. Really, really entertaining. Um, I have so enjoyed, sorry, I've got to talk about tangents of tangents. We're going off one there right now. Uh, I have. Really enjoyed it, uh, and that's when you hist when you hear me share and plow on and uh, one or two other sayings coming up in the near future. Uh, that will be the reason why it's because I got a few things that farming things stuck in my head. In fact, I was out on the tractor lawnmower uh, last week and I was shouting because uh, we do one of the lawns because it's quite big. Uh, is that there's me shouting at the wife going farming, and she's like looking at me because she, she can't work out what I'm what I'm saying. Uh, and she only were, uh, we were chatting about it yesterday, and she only realised put two and two together uh, what I was chatting about. So you need to watch it. Millennial Farmer, shameless plug, really nice guy, completely genuine, and um, yeah, I like him a lot. Really good presenter, and, and again, one of those things about YouTube, uh, and just at the camera, not apologising, you'll be alright, uh, is it genuine. Somebody who's genuine normally does quite well. With an underlying purpose, they do rather well. And he's one of those people. So I have enjoyed that. Shameless plug for them um, because it is genuinely really, really good. Anyway, let's go and get this thing trimmed in. Switch warning. Engines blah, blah, blah. off. Low rates. Ooh. Engine off. Engine off. High rates. Cool. Is that trimmed in nicely? I think we are. Because uh, the reason why I need to get it trimmed in now here on the desk is because I'm about to go and glue the lid on top of it. <laughs> and then once that's in, uh, we're going to have to use a craft knife to get it back out again. Uh, so that will be fun, I am sure, if I ever need to do that. And yes, the ESC will be lovely and cosy and warm underneath there. I, I would hate for it to get too cold in this lovely warm summer which we're about to have so <laughs> yeah that's gonna be fun right uh which do you like my tail i think that's really cool i do, I do like that tail uh let's craft out a little bit of the esc wires to go in the bottom yeah sorry we've got the usual these uh chats should be oh, sorry these build sessions should be called of uh, how many different topics can matt go off topic on on top of off topic topics I'm enjoying myself, that's all it that matters. I hope you are too. Right, let's have a quick look. Um, yes, that's the, Phil, if you've been opposed to the link to the Millennial Farmer, thank you, do really appreciate that one as well. Uh, again, just looking at uh, your chat as well. Uh, if it's when you have turned up. Yeah, you put it down, it's just, it's the fairies, isn't it? Is it the fairies, is it little Tinkerbell, she coming into your office and nicking your bits? 
that sounds so wrong. Right, hot glue. Have we got any hot glue left in here? I hope we have. Right, come on. Right, ah, uh, you do want to work because it's been sat there spilling its guts out. Ah, run out of hot glue. Stick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, that's the other one, is that I don't know where my other hot glue gun is. I got one of those nice uh, fr 12 volt, supposed to be 12 volts, uh, charge, um, hobby ones, uh, you stick a 3S or 4S, but well, stick three, you're supposed to be for 3S, but you stick 4S on it and blow torch the end. Uh, it gets hot really, really quickly. Uh, saves you waiting around and all that. Uh, and uh, I, I have no idea where it's gone at all. Right, obviously you want to make sure that's in there nice and straight. I've chosen a nice flat surface to push that down on, haven't I? <laughs> Don't you just love watching all those polished build videos? <laughs> and I'm thinking, <laughs> that's not reality <laughs> at all. We all know the reality is that we put may we make many screw ups when we're building stuff. Uh, and um, uh, what's his name? Oh, what's his name? Uh, is it Four Ticks? Um, I love it when he includes, includes the boobies at the end. Uh, there's also another YouTube channel which I've been watching, uh, Fishers. Uh, it's a woodworking channel, Fishers. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, and he includes all his boobies at the end. Um, I... It drives me nuts. Is that enough? Is that, if I put more hog... We don't need more hog glue in that, Matt. And I think I've got, now got more... Technically, I've got more hog glue over the desk than what I've got in the model. Oh, it's guns for a nightmare. Suicidal Fredlock. Right, ladies and gents, I think I've built some on a build Saturday. Should we be surprised? I think we should be. Matt's ability to talk is uh, legendary. Right, boys, girls, noobs, and pilots. We have been abort, uh, built ourselves as a Newton. I'm kind of proud. Let's get across to OBS. Big camera. That, ladies and gents, is a Sir Newton. Activity alarm. You sharpen all. Probably should unplug it. Right. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a Sir Newton. It is sporting a front canard. Do 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 do. Uh, so it's a front. So we've got canards at the front, and. The rear surfaces are weird because the whole, if I turn it around like that, that will give you an idea, the whole wing moves. Uh, so this is a cross between uh, a flying, well I don't know, it's his own thing in its own right. It is a Sir Newton, which it will now be forever known as a Sir Newton. A quick rundown, this is a little chuck glider which, um, Andy gave me last year actually, and then converted it uh, to uh, a center bar mold in the middle so that we're able to move both surfaces fully. A uh, really nice job which Andy's did on that one, or John, his brother, did to it. Uh, we've got 2206, uh, 2400 kV motor on the back with a six by four prop. Uh, definitely, definitely with thrust angle issues at all. So if this one flies a bit funky in the sky, uh, it's obviously not my fantastic work which I've been in done here on the rest of the model it will be down to the front must down, that it will be purely down to the thrust angle uh, of the motor on the back of course so i may need to readjust that one uh build time not that long to be honest um yeah the, the, I, I think i've just spent the longest amount of time just sorting those servos out at the back the rest of it was just trying to work out the layout of the model itself uh, but you have to admit it really does have quite a unique view uh, or, or a look so that's why I'm calling it a Sir Newton because it's very rare that we come across a model which has a unique look um, because every normal aeroplane looks like a normal RC model aeroplane you know even high wing low wing etc etc they all kind of look the same flying wings are a little bit different a mini drag for example forward swept wing um, is kind of unique that one I saw an opportunity to um, name something after uh, a content creator who I quite like a lot, which is uh, Andrew Newton. Uh, and as such, I am um, I'm naming it a Sir Newton. So yeah, look out for a few more canard planes in the future because uh, they 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 are known to fly really quite well. 
Uh, they do have one or two slight issues with getting affected from uh, fr uh, uh, side winds on them. I think that was one issue with them. Um, but everything is minor uh, in the scheme of things. So I, I just like it because it's... When do you ever see a model like that? It's like throwing a mini talon backwards. Look out for an episode on that one uh, in the next week or two. Yeah, probably two weeks. So anyway, there we go. We actually built something for a uh, build Saturday. I'm very impressed with myself. I hope you're impressed. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> right, anyway, that's that one done. Right. I've done one thing on my to-do list this morning, which was to build a Sinewton. Let's quickly move on. So I'm going to quickly jump back across to the top view and get back to your chat as well. Uh, don't forget, if you're on the live version, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. Any questions or comments about anything which you've been seeing here today, don't forget to, you can either ask in the live version, because I'm keeping a half an eye on the chat, uh, or nip across to the Facebook group. Uh, rag the, go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash rag the nuts off. Uh, on that said, let's have a quick look. <laughs> Congratulations, I'm off to go and crash some planes. Good girl, well done. Uh, you might you might need to turn it around. Uh, you, it does look really cool, Chris. When do you ever see a model in that design? I think there's, I like that. It stands out for a lot of good reasons. So I like it and it's uh, a format which I would personally like to explore further uh, over the next couple of weeks and months. Uh, some more, yeah, we'll just throw it and see what happens on that one. Uh, Jack the Beat, Jack, go and do it. A glider, what, five, ten quid, worst case, copper servos? Can't be that hard. Should be good fun. If it, if it smashes into a million pieces, you're going to cry at the end of the day because you spent 175 quid on it and it's a bit shit. Probably not. Excuse my language. Uh, Lee says, unfortunately, no Lidl's here in Oz. Uh, who wants to get a cheap dog smuggling syndicate? Uh, apparently the one which is on Banggood, the bigger one, uh, I saw Andrew Newton post it on his YouTube page or account uh, earlier today. Uh, that one's not too bad. Apparently more efficient than the little ones as well. Um, so yeah, maybe I should get a couple of ordered up and we'll take a look at them more closely and probably go through a couple of iterations because I think there's potential there. I like that format for a canard model. So I think if I get a couple of different like chuck gliders of the same format and go for a different few versions, I think we can probably very quickly work out wh wh what is the right route on them. So, right, plowing on. We, we, we made a Sir Newton. We have made progress. We can now officially call this a Build Saturday. I feel quite, I feel much, I feel better for that. I genuinely do. Because last week was a bit of a washout because that was just me stood here chatting to you for about an hour and a half. <laughs> which I'm not complaining about. I really enjoy, I genuinely really, really did enjoy it. Just need to go and try and pick some of that glue off my desk because it's welded itself down here. Come on. Ah! I think I'll just do that later. Right, moving on, moving on, moving on. Next topic, at CNC. So if you've been underneath a rock for the past month or so, uh, you may not know that I have literally a 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter CNC machine, uh, which is lit, it has been here and arrived. Uh, and if you don't know how big 1.5 meters is, it's five foot, okay? So as tall as me, uh, slightly shorter than me. So, yeah, slightly shorter than me. Absolutely mahoosive thing. Uh, and that hot glue's really bugging me, so I'm gonna have that off the desk. Job done. Uh, and I've just started to build it. And progress is doing pretty well. Uh, I've got the X and Z uh, axes, which I've just been working on. Can this come out on the camera? Yes. So we'll have a closer look. It has been uh, really straightforward to build. Uh, the I have gone for a lead screw mesh setup, which was slightly more expensive. Uh, but it will give me more talk uh, and options for things to do later. So right now I'll set it up on the minimal height but have higher accuracy. But later on um, there are some bigger projects which I'd like to be doing. Uh, and if I need to move the bed around I will do that later. 
But right now, I literally am in the build stage. It has been really, really straightforward. And I actually want to pause for a moment and just show you the instructions which I've got. So let me move this across. And I'll happily share this, the, this PDF in the um, Facebook group so you can have a look to see what's involved. Because I know for some of you, it may feel that it might be a little bit scary to you. So that's, that's probably scary when I'm doing that. Right, so we'll take a closer look at that. If I do F function F11, uh, maybe go back a page or two, scroll up, because there was some mating of some parts there. Uh, come on. Come on. Right. That there looks really scary, uh, but it's not really that hard at all because you've got the X plate. You just look at the picture and then just read the parts off. And it was it's so straightforward, really straightforward. Um, but the thing which I learned with these instructions is that you don't just look at the pictures, you actually read the text underneath because there are hints in there. Now, I don't know if you can see this on my screen. There's this eccentric nuts. Really, really important that you get them to point the six millimeter laser cut uh, marker on it at the bottom so that you then end up with maximum uh, adjustability. So, yeah. The manual's really, really straightforward. I will, sh if you want that, I'll, I will share it in the in the Facebook group for you. Uh, and progress so far has been absolutely fantastic, uh, and it has it's been really, really straightforward. So things are just kind of bolting together, and I'm taking my time uh, to get bits done. And that's that uh, we there were a couple of pages here before. It's just straightforward nuts and bolts, and I've been marking stuff as I've been going because. I've never built anything like this before. Uh, I've got to put my hands up. I'm genuinely not really entirely sure what I'm, gonna, what I'm doing right now. But I'm just following the instructions and plowing through. I've got the LED, I've got the LED lead screw. Sorry, not LED, lead screw uh, working through there. And that's going through the rear axis, which is perhaps a little bit tight at the moment. But nothing which I've done so far has been complicated. Uh, I have literally just been taking my time to uh, just work through the the actual what it says in the instructions so uh, this is the x-axis which rolls sideways across the width of the machine uh, and then we have the z-axis and you'll see it's here uh, that's a c-section of aluminium which they've been in pre-cut and they've already been in tapped for me as well it does make that so much easier uh, and we'll see that that is super super smooth through there and absolutely naff or waggle even if I move it off to both ends really impressed with the kit so far and obviously I haven't put it together I haven't cut anything on that one but I have genuinely been really impressed with uh, how well and how straightforward this has gone together because uh, I like like I said I've got no experience to this at all and let me go and grab another part we well that's the right runner as well that's another rail section of course if I grab that C section you imagine that's going down the side uh, so I put it that way around like that there we go that's come on I've tightened them all up so that they're, they're a good fit and now I've individually done them on the bottom uh, and that's the C section so you can imagine that's the runner which has then got the uh, cross member going across uh, at the top of here and then of course in the middle of there we then have this section, which is running sideways as well. And then you've got the Z axis, which is going up and down. I'm getting there, I'm getting there, slowly but surely. Um, I'm halfway through my instructions. So yeah, watch this space, CNC projects. Some of them, I've got, I've got ideas which I would like to do. I've got, so actually quite surprised of how many good ideas which I've come up with, or objects and things which I would like to build uh, already. Um, and we will discuss CNC in a little bit later, but for but for right now, just the, the, the where I want to leave this today with you uh, is that everybody knows about 3D printing. In 3D printing, you're printing layer upon a layer upon layer to, to make an object from the ground up. Whereas that with a CNC machine, is it's the reverse of the process. It is a subtractive process. So uh, 3D printing is additive, it goes up upwards. Uh, and then with uh, CNC is that it's a, a negative, it's a subtractive process. So you're taking material away. That could be cutting out a whole piece which you then take out and, and remove. Uh, or it could be, I'm looking for an example, it could be ah, just in there, 
it is there it could be a subcut which hasn't gone all the way through uh, to create a relief so but that could be perhaps a landscape it could be uh, give you a hint of a project is that I'm going to take a photo of Luna and then going to cut that out in Photoshop and then going to go and convert it to grayscale and then <coughs> excuse me touch it up in a few places and then do a relief or like landscape of Luna uh, onto a piece of material and then finish it up. So that's a project which I'd like to do with Lunakins, who's been a super good girl over there. I'm gonna pause for a moment. That one's stone cold. Mm, way better. Also to mess around and um, not that's not mess around to play around with uh, the amalgamation of different material tip materials as well because with a CNC machine you're genuinely taking away material but you have to ask you what material are you taking away and what are you what could you replace it with so maybe some resins for example um, why not do some color um, resins can you Potentially, potentially make up a couple. I've got I've basically I took twenty five kilo um, metal tin of uh, epoxy. Uh, can I mix that up to make uh, a bigger project? Is there things could I do? Mix up multiple colors and then make a rainbow of epoxy colors and then cut away. Could I have cut something away beforehand and then put rainbow epoxy on top and then taken away to go on an extra level? There's many things, which ideas which I've got whirling around in my head. I've jot, jotted a load of them down already. Uh, and of course, there's nothing stopping us from perhaps putting a laser cutter on the front and cutting out some foam board, uh, trying to have a go at making some of our own foam board kits as well. Oh, and by the way, I've got a very clear direction of what I'm going to be doing with that one as well. Already worked out the process and the reasoning behind those types of cutouts as well. Something which we'll investigate in the future. But heck. CNC, I haven't even built it yet. Right, uh, moving on, I've not been looking at your chat, so I've got it on the wrong screen. Let's go back to our control room. Uh, right, uh, moving to your chat as well. Uh, sorry, I've met, I can see it's been quite busy on there. Uh, let's have a click on you. Right, no planes for you, uh, Vince. Thank you for joining us as well. Uh, uh, reductive uh, engineer is the term which I've heard for traditional uh, engineering methods. That sounds pretty cool. Right, next topic, and then actually, are we doing for time? Yeah, we're gonna wrap up in a couple of minutes time. Uh, camera lens, oh, look out for an episode on uh, the replacement of a run cam lens. I don't think I've seen anybody else do this. I have basically worn out my run cam to the extent I've had to buy, and instead of buying a whole new one, which I perhaps could have done, I've bought the uh, lens uh, and the uh, camera module to go in the front of it. Um, because I think the Runcam 2 is a really good camera. We're going to have a video on that one very shortly. It's here on the desk. I'd like to get that done by tomorrow, so expect that video out with you in the next couple of days. Uh, somebody needs to own up and take the hit for the team to say who was it for the crash of Banggood yesterday. Didn't know if you knew anything that happened. Uh, ooh, Ranger 1600. All I'm going to say on the Ranger 1600 is A... Overall, even after spending five hours on the build, still impressed, still really like it. And the other thing is, how many models have you ever, ever seen me stick models on, uh, stickers on? One? Wing Wing Z84, which is actually up there on that shelf. That's the only model I ever stick stickers on. Uh, looks really good. Can't wait to fly it. Just come out of a five hour, probably more, it's like six or seven hour build on it. Still liking it. I'm glad to be late to the party for that model. Um, we get to have made it tomorrow. So look out for that in over the next couple of days. If you would like to know my initial thoughts and impressions at post build, uh, there is a link to that video in the Facebook group. Again, there's a link to the Facebook group underneath this video on YouTube. Nip across there. I've already been and published that one, uh, and it will be out live on YouTube in the next couple of days or so, uh, which is something which I do with most videos as well, which I've done. So the like the run camera episode, when, once I record it, uh, and also this CNC build, those episodes I do publish in the Facebook group first uh, so that you get to see them before they hit YouTube, so there's no time delay there for you. 
uh, wouldn't <laughs> a grumpy biker, wouldn't a landscape of Luna be a moonscape? Uh, yes, but no, if your Luna was actually a pet miniature schnauzer, and I don't want to wake her up because she's been so good over there, so yeah, Luna, Luna's a dog for me. Uh, tried out the Drax Sumo yet, uh, Lee, really good point. The Drax Sumo is here, and it's ready to fly. Really looking forward to this one. In fact, why don't I go and swap this camera back to the big one? Because uh, it is time for us to wrap up in just a moment. Right, there we go. Yeah, Drac Sumo or Tech Drac, it's ready to fly. It's all set up. You can see I've had a battery in the front of it. Uh, I've had to repair it once or twice already. Uh, it has technically flown. Um, that hence why I broke the yellow off and I had to do a repair on that one. And again, I made a video about the repair as well because I thought there was value in that for you too as an RC pilot, so I've done that. Um, it is ready to fly. It will fly properly tomorrow. Um, look out for that in the next couple of days. We also have the Bon Drac, which is here somewhere or another. I don't know how I'm going to fit these models, all, of my, all these models into an MX-5 tomorrow. It is going to be a bit of a challenge. Uh, one model which you've not seen any video footage on. <laughs> Why is not HS1? I had a bonsai in the cellar. Uh, and I thought, heck. I'm going to make a baby one. So I made a baby one. Uh, so that one will get made in tomorrow as well. Don't worry, I won't forget the camera. We'll get plenty of foot uh, footage on that one as well. So late, very good question. Uh, on that note, it is time for me to wrap up. All I can say is a massive thank you to you for taking the time to join me here for a, a build and a chit chat and a sip of some coffee here at the new workstation. We've got so many cool things coming up. Just think about that canard plane as well, the Sir Newton. Re genuinely excited to see how that flies. I have no idea how that's going to do in the sky at all. Really, really looking forward to that. We have the Drac Sumo, we have the Bond Drac as well. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, we've got the Ranger 1600. It's underneath my desk. It's ready to be flown tomorrow. Genuinely really looking forward to that. So we've got a couple of exciting things coming up, not only with new models and a couple of strange designs, which we've got here at the moment, but also for what the future holds with our new adventure very shortly into the world of CNC as well. I know for many of you out there, it's something which you've never done or perhaps uh, have had a slight curiosity in. Uh, and that's the thing is that I've wanted one of these for years and I've kind of bought myself a really big one <laughs> because heck, why not? <laughs> in short, if, you, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna go, you're gonna go big, you might as well go big. Uh, so in theory, we can get half a sheet of eight by four on this one. Uh, it is pretty big to say the least. But I didn't want to be limited. A, I didn't want to. A, I wanted something big because I would, I would always kick myself if I had gone big enough. And B, I always wanted to be able to get a sheet of A1 in there. And a sheet of A1 uh, is a brilliant size for us to be able to, to laser cut stuff out of uh, later on. So I'm already thinking, you may have noticed that there have been a few changes here at Rag the Nuts Off uh, over the last couple of weeks. Some of them have gone down quite well, I hope, and some of them um, may not have gone quite down quite well in the beginning, um, but I'm very much looking towards the end game here and what some of the things which I've got in my head, which I would like to do and you know, are in the process of doing. So uh, we're all on a journey with this. What happens from here? No idea. In short, well, no, I've got a very good idea uh, and um, we'll see. So anyway, I've talked too much. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this episode. If you've enjoyed this live build episode, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. Any questions or comments about anything which you've been and seen here today, uh, you can either leave me a comment and underneath this video after we've been live, or pop across to the Facebook group. Again, shameless plug for that. Uh, and of course, don't forget, next Saturday, nine o'clock UK time, we're gonna be here live at the desk and working on the next part. In fact, if I've got that CNC machine built, I will hook up some Wi-Fi, or maybe go for a wired connection in the room where it's gonna be this, where it's gonna live permanently, uh, and we will take a look at that, uh, the CNC machine, and maybe look at the process. I'm, I'm getting a little bit hopeful here, 
um, so don't hold me to it. Maybe we'll look at the process of making something really, really simple uh, and then actually building it live or getting it cut live uh, so that you can see what goes on for the entire process. I think that would be a really good challenge whether we get to that this week coming or the following one, not entirely sure. And of course, if you've got any ideas or suggestions what we can do with a five foot plum and wide CNC machine, let me know, comment section or across in the Facebook group. So on that note, from myself, Matt, as always, cheerios.